Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. If you'd like to know the absolute latest on any commercial real estate related subjects, check out our on demand show podcast. For example, last week's show, we talked with top tenant reps from JLL, Colliers, and Cressa about successful tenant strategies for 2014. The week before, we talked with Reese Lead Economist Ryan Severino about their market projections, including how Obamacare and the government shutdown could affect the economy jobs and commercial real estate and be sure to check out the show featuring the feds view on commercial real estate that show is also now on youtube there are lots of interesting shows to choose from grab your phone tablet or computer and visit itunes or the show website commercialrealestateshow.com well today our subject of our show is mailbox money or uh, as Rocky and Bullwinkle used to do, you know, two, two subjects, uh, or single tenant net lease investment market. Uh, please welcome our uh, guest on the phone here, Karen Hutton, CEO of the Hutton Company. With a rich history in commercial leasing and, and family roots in development, Karen founded the Hutton Company in 1994, and they have been busy. Uh, with more than 175 owned and managed developments and over 700 freestanding locations delivered, they work in 35 states. They deliver about 40 developments a year. Karen, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Michael. Glad to be here. Also, please welcome Sherry Strom, the VP National Net Lease Investment Group at Bull Realty. Sherry and her team focus on assisting clients with the acquisition and disposition of single tenant net lease investment properties. The National Net Lease Investment Group is a division of Bull Realty, a U.S. commercial real estate sales and advisory firm headquartered in Atlanta. Sherry, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Michael. Glad to be here. And ladies, uh, I'd like to get started with a, a basic question that may be on the mind of, of some investors around the country. What is it about single tenant net lease investment properties that is so appealing? Well, Michael, from my perspective, that's typically what the Hutton Company does, and that's mm-hmm. Our main 90% of the work that we do is single tenant net leases. We've developed 750 over the over the course of 14 years, and it's just amazing at the difference in where the cap rates are moving and where the interest is from the investment. Uh, we do double net leases, and we also do triple net leases. And today, there's just not the product out there with the last seven years the way the economy has has handled the downturn in the economy and what developments took place and didn't take place. There were a few opportunities out there that were growing. It just happened to be one of the segments that the Hutton Company was located in, which was discount, auto parts, dollar stores. And that's what we've been so heavily engrossed in is developing those freestanding tenants throughout the country. Yeah, it sure has been a hot market, hasn't it, Sherry? Yes, it has. And what is it about the net lease investment properties that that your buyers and your clients uh, see so interesting as opposed to other investment alternatives? What we see mostly is uh, people are looking for wealth preservation. Mm -hmm. Um, They can get higher returns on these net lease properties than they can from their banks. Um, You know, they're looking for a long-term investment, like you said, mailbox money, uh, with minimal landlord responsibilities. Yeah, okay. And they're considered very safe, right? I mean, the default rate on these national credit single tenants is is very low, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. And and Karen, you talked about the development world. You've been in it for a while. What has changed about single tenant, tenant net lease development over the last few years for you? People are starting to recognize it. You know, mm-hmm. we've been developing family dollar stores for a long time, and it really never was the cool thing to do. And people were out developing a lot of bigger box tenants and would always question me why I didn't diversify and do something else. And, you know, we were always trying to diversify because diversification is great, but we were doing such volume it was hard to keep our initial clients happy. So now you've got these discounters in the in their investment grade that they are, are now ranked a triple B minus that the staying power, the number of stores and the growth and the sales volume these stores are generating has made it very interesting and people are starting to notice um, the retailers. And Karen, what do you see for uh, development uh, cycle right now? Are you seeing more, more tenants and more properties develop? Uh, what are you seeing? Yeah, the single tenant, it just seems like the, the 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 national retailers that are growing are growing by leaps and bounds. And I'm talking about, you know, AutoZone, O'Reilly, Advance Auto, um, Pet Boys. I'm talking about Family Dollar, Dollar General. 
um, those discounters, I mean, each one of those, when we do a volume this year, we'll do, we have 100 approvals this year. And last year we had 70 approvals. The year before we had probably had 40 approvals. And we're going to turn over 80-plus developments this year. And they're all um, um, a ranking of the type of tenants I just mentioned. Right. And you're talking about a lot of necessity retail there. And I think that's what one of the things that makes this market uh, so safe and sought after is that uh, people believe, and I guess that it's shown, that through a downturn, uh, these retailers still do well. And and what about sales velocity and investor interest? Uh, what do you see there? Is that declining or improving? What do you see, Sherry? Um, I've seen just what Karen was talking about in the dollar stores. Mm-hmm. Uh, that velocity over the past 12 months has jumped about 23%. Uh, so a lot of activity in the dollar stores. Drug stores uh, have climbed about 10%. And uh, we've seen the QSRs, the quick service restaurants, um, Investors highly, really looking for uh, corporate locations, but that velocity is up about 40% over last year. Okay. And corporate locations, you mean corporate guarantee versus uh, the franchise uh, Z? Exactly, yeah. Okay. All right. And when and of these stores and these these types of tenants, uh, Sherry, what's most popular? What, what are people really looking for? Lately, we've been getting um, people like, obviously, the, they like the credit tenants that um, – you know, the, the ones that Karen just mentioned, the dollar stores. But they're also looking for location. Um, you know, some of these buyers are what we call real estate buyers. They, they don't care. You know, they want good real estate. Um, a lot of them like the long-term triple net leases versus double net leases uh, is, is very popular. And on the, the, the restaurant side, people are really looking for rent increases throughout the term of the lease. Right. And uh, Karen, what do you see for for brands? Are there certain uh, brands or companies that uh, you get more interest from uh, from a, from a buyer standpoint? You know, because our portfolio is kind of is narrow. It's not like Sherry's portfolio where she's looking at a lot of different tenants. You know, mm-hmm. we specifically are doing uh, the dollar stores and the auto parts stores. We also have small regional shopping centers that we're doing. Um, we just are finishing up a belt department store. Uh, with with uh, other credit tenants within that center, and the interest in that is very high as well. So it's a well leased center. It's 100 percent leased, and it's got a great ground lease. It's got great tenants that people can identify with, and those are getting a lot of attention as well. Okay, and we've talked about credit tenants, and most of our listeners will know what we're talking about. But for the some a few that do not, uh, Sherry, what is the definition of a credit tenant and, and a non credit tenant, if you will? Um, it typically depends on their, their uh, credit rating from Standard & Poor's or Moody's. Um, there's different levels. There's investment grade, which is a, a B minus, triple B minus uh, or higher. Um, and those would be the CVS, the Walgreens, the Dollar Generals, O'Reilly's, those type. Um, and then the ones below that, um, you know, may, maybe not rated, but it could be like a tractor supply. Uh, a good national tenants uh, that are you know across the country. Okay, and I think that's what most people think of when they think about the single tenant net lease market. It is these investment grade tenants uh, that are national tenants. They're 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 well known, but there's also non credit tenants and there's local tenants. So there's also single tenant net lease properties that are or sell lease backs that are very uh, companies that are doing very well. I know we just sold a large uh, industrial building, very good credit. I don't think it was considered a credit tenant, it was a non credit tenant, but it was actually extremely good credit and a very strong tenant. And there's also the local single tenant properties where you may get a higher cap rate and a cheaper pricing for the real estate. So you have some some room there for the property to escalate in value over the lease term. Well, we're getting more single tenant market intel for you in just a moment. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you in part by your friends at Bull Realty. When your business requires proven performance, visit bullrealty.com or call 800 800- 408 Bull. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We have some great shows coming up for you, including a show on the rebirth, if you will, of the housing market. Our guests include Jed Smith with the National Association of Realtors, Brad Hunter with Metro Study, and Steve Palm with Smart Numbers. Don't miss a show of special interest to you. Sign up for a once a week email announcing the show topic at commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, today we're talking about the single tenant net lease investment market with Sherry Strong with Bull Realty and Karen Hutton with the Hutton Company. Let's discuss corporate 
lease guarantees and how corporate lease guaranteed properties uh, values differ from from properties that have a guarantee that's from the franchisee, uh, Sherry? Uh, the corporate guarantees uh, for the dollar stores, uh, the CVSs, the, the drug stores, um, those typically have longer leases, have lower cap rates uh, because it's less risk. Um, and you've got more in the restaurants, the, the QSR, the quick service restaurant arena, where you've got franchise versus corporate locations. And the, the cap rates and the prices of those vary a lot depending on where the property is located, depending on the franchisee, how strong they are, how many locations they have, um, how long they've been in business. Um, but you typically see, like especially on the QSRs, uh, franchise versus corporate locations, probably anywhere between a 50 to you know 150 basis points difference in cap rates, just depending on all the, the variables. Okay. Karen, you seeing something similar? A- absolutely. Um, the first thing that buyers ask for when they're getting their lease, do you have a corporate guarantee? So we, we want to always get that when we're dealing with a national tenant. Okay. You know, and net lease property values are obviously higher the longer the lease. What are, are some of the larger shifts in value changes, Karen? I mean, if you've got a, a, a seven year, five to 10 year lease or a 10 to 15 year lease, what do you see there on value based on a remaining lease term? Yeah, the, the investors are, are so different today, even with the REITs changing their strategies where they're chasing lower lower um, cap rates versus higher cap rates or lower uh, lease terms versus higher lease terms. So there's double net and then there's triple net, but really in the same categories, if I have a 10-year lease for a credit rate to tenant um, and I have a 15-year lease, then the, the, the difference in the cap rate could be a percentage point. Wow. It could be a point and a half. It just depends on, again, the tenant and the location. But the, the lease term really makes a lot of difference. And Sherry, what do you see there? Uh, I see um, typically the 10 years is kind of what I call the cutoff. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got two different groups of, of investors, whether, you know, the long ter- people want long term, you know, lower cap rates, stability. Um, they like things longer than 10 years. Or you've got some of the sometimes these are more local investors, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at a deal with, you know, five years left on the lease, six years left on the lease. Um, it's two different buyer pools. Uh, okay. And again, there's typically about, like Karen said, about a, you know, could be a percentage point difference in cap rate between the two. Okay. And over the life of an investment, that can be a pretty big number. So uh, I guess some of the, the buyers that are buying these shorter term uh, lease terms on these triple net leases uh, are, are looking for that extra return. And, and there's some risk with that. But what are some tips, Sherry, for investors who may want to look at the higher returns cap rates on these shorter leases? Um, again, a lot of the shorter term ones are going to more local people that know that market. Uh, the thing that we tell them to, to look out for is, you know, how is that store doing? What are the store sales? Um, try to get that as much as you can. Um, how long have they been there? Um, you know, just what is the what is the rent per square foot? Um, so if they if they did leave, could you re-rent it, you know, fairly easily? Um, again, it's really just know the tenant um, and ask a lot of questions and really get educated on the property. Okay. And, and Karen, I guess you, you'd you like to know what the criteria is for that company to open a new store or to keep a store open, right? So if their percentage of, of, of sales is uh, adequate, then you think, well, maybe they will renew, right? Yeah, there's quite a few things to look at. Mm-hmm. One is, what is the expansion of that type tenant as far as the number of stores they relocate when the store does do so well? Mm-hmm. Or they, is, is, it a, is it a location they can outposition, mm-hmm. expand the store, and do even better by getting their square foot of sales down a little bit and get more square footage? So just because they're doing a lot of volume doesn't always mean that's the best buy. You've got to really look at, is that hitting the, the tipping point where that tenant may want to relocate? And so we've had that happen. So there's a lot of things to look at. Also, the condition of the of the location and the and what kind of uh, shortcomings might be in the lease itself, and as far as repairs and roof and warranties. So, you know, there's still good opportunities, but you just got to know what you're getting into by looking through and really looking at the tenant as well as the lease itself. Okay, so it is a good way to increase your returns though isn't it to absolutely. to look at those properties absolutely even the REITs are doing that today so people uh some of the real estate investment trusts that would not look at the double net before who did not look at short term they're looking at the short term leases i mean they're looking at five years and they're examining them and they're trying to get that cap rate up they want to be in the eights eight and a half to nine so 
Mm-hmm. There's a lot of buyers, and that's that's solely what they go after. Yeah, and there's some other things that are going to affect value. Um, you know, like whether it's double net or triple net, and what the lease escalations are. We're going to get more into more in considerations on the single tenant net lease market or mailbox money, if you will. I'm Michael Bull. You're listening to the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you in part by France Media. France Media provides exposure to the world of commercial real estate. Visit francemediainc.com or call 404-832-8262. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. If you're listening to the show online or on one of our radio stations around the country, uh, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. You can access some great commercial real estate videos. There are three sections there. The first section is called Market Updates. The second is Industry Intel. And the third is Available Properties. Just visit YouTube and search for Commercial Real Estate Show, right? Well, today our show is called mailbox money. We're talking about single tenant and net lease investment properties with Sherry Strom and Karen Hutton. And uh, Karen, we talked about triple net properties and that's what everybody seems to really like. The you know that makes it more of a mailbox money, right? The the tenants taking care of all operating expenses and, and roof and just everything there and, and hopefully you just get a check for for a long time. But what are, what are some value changes and some investor interest when you go to double net versus uh, triple net? Triple net is actually a new territory for me. We've always been in the double net, and it's never I've never really shied away from that and really enjoyed it for the past 15 years. But just due to some recent changes with clients I've been working with who went to a 15-year true triple net, I've not even collected my first coupon or my mail check yet. <laughs> but I've always heard about it. And, you know, when you're talking to certain investors, and really all they do want to, want to do is go down and pick up a check and not worry about anything. They don't want to worry about the taxes. They don't want to worry about the cam. They don't want to worry about the parking lot. Nothing. I mean, all you do is pick up that check. And, and you pay for that. You get a lower return. And when we talk about cap rates, that's an interest rate return on your money. So, you know, you may be driving down that cap rate, but, you know, below a six five and a half to five percent depending on the the term of that triple net lease determining on that tenant and also the location okay so it can make a pretty big difference in the uh return it's huge uh, Sherry, you probably have a lot of um experience with this as far as what you're you're seeing your buyers and what they're looking for whereas you know i'm a buyer with a couple of products you see a lot more than i do yeah a lot of our buyers are older retired people that are looking to make you know a higher return than they get at their bank and those people mostly retirees they do not want to have to go deal with a roof leak or you know something like that so the the true triple net is very important to them because they don't have any landlord responsibilities and that's interesting because i assume the the maintenance and repair of that roof or parking lot is baked into the cap rate as an expense anyway in the noi the annual net operating income anyway right yes so it's 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 baked in the cap rate it's just that ease of ownership and i think that's one of the big things that that people really like about the single tenant net lease market. Well, let's talk about uh, escalations. Uh, I think some of these these leases on single tenant net lease properties are 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 stable. There's no rent increases over the entire term, which is interesting. And then some of them have increases every five years and things. Sherry, g- give us a little intel on that. Um, there's a certain a category of investors out there that will only look at leases with rent increases because they like that hedge against inflation. Uh, the thing that you have to look out for is that where we see a lot of that is in the quick service restaurants is that uh, you've got a rent to sales ratio, you know, h- how the store is doing um, in, it, it, to the rent. And if that ratio is above 10 percent, typically that that's that's going to cause a hardship on the franchisee uh, or the owner of that property. So it, when you look at those increases, you, if you're starting out at a high rent to sales ratio, you know, if, if you've got an in- annual increases of one percent or one and a half percent, you know, in five or six years, that could be a real hardship on that tenant. So you really need to look at those numbers carefully um, and start out at a low rent to sales ratio so that you have room for those escalations. Okay. And let's talk about cap rates. Uh, Karen, what, what do you see for cap rates right now on some sample tenants and lease terms around the country? You know, it's really interesting uh, because we're also a, a buyer as well, even though we're selling a lot of our inventory right now that's coming, coming due or coming available because 
someone out there wants it more than I thought I wanted. It. And we're just, <laughs> you know, deciding to say, hey, we, we probably should sell this. You know, it looks, but we really were planning on keeping it. So um, the big difference is really the knowledge of the seller and, and um, also their ability to hang on to it for a length of time before they, ha- they need to sell it. So those are things that can drive the, the cap rate in different directions. Um, I think finding the right broker, you know, like, you know, using Sherry versus, you know, using someone that may not have the experience can find you that right buyer. And if you have a little bit of time, I think timing is everything. Um, there's so many things that can drive. I can have the same product, and I've seen something very similar to a family dollar sale, and someone sold it for a point and a half more than I did. Mm-hmm. And I will call them up. I said, why? Why didn't you call me? I would have bought it. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it's knowledge and sometimes it's 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 a personal um, limitation that they have to sell that product and it may have nothing to do with the real estate. So I would say always open the box up, look at it, see what's there, ask ask questions and you know, see see really what the cap rate is about. Yeah. That, those are good tips and sometimes it is affected by supply and demand and as a seller how well is that property marketed but um, Sherry can you give us some example cap rates that you're seeing on on some of these products right now yeah and um, some of the auto parts stores uh, you know again we've seen those those go down uh, probably in the last 12 months you know 25 to 50 basis points depending on the lease terms the location um, you know the demographics they're anywhere probably between six and seven percent cap rates um, Dollar stores, again, it's going to depend on the lease term, whether it's, you know, a, a double net lease or a triple net lease and, and the location. Um, those have come down on the true triple net dollar generals have come down substantially. Um, we're seeing those in the, the 65 to 7% range, again, on the true triple net dollar general 15-year leases. Um, and drug stores, um, again, just th- they have longer term leases, uh, and those are in the 5 to 6% uh, percent range cap rate range and those dollar generals you're referring to sherry those are all flat leases for i think 10 years yeah you, we see different ones some of them are flat for the full 15 and then okay. some of them have uh uh three percent or i'm sorry three yeah, three percent rent increases in year 11. okay and yeah. then the family dollars that we're that we're working with you know those have escalations uh, can have es- escalations throughout and i think when people look at dollar store just make sure you're really diving into the details and make sure you get apples to apples when you're just seeing a cap rate. It, there's, you know, there's usually some reason if it's very similar markets uh, in the same ter- lease term that there's something within the lease that may be driving that cap rate a different way. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yes. Uh, when we mentioned cap rates, look at all the details. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you in part by your friends at Bull Realty. When your business requires proven performance, visit bullrealty.com or call 800-408-BULL. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. If you appreciate the Commercial Real Estate Show, can you let us know? Shoot us an email or like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, or shoot the show out on Twitter, if you will. We'd love to hear from you. You can find all our contact information and social media links at commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, today we're talking about the single tenant net lease market with Karen Hutton and Sherry Strong with Bull Realty. And I'd like to ask you about rising interest rates. We all expect to see interest rates rising some. Sherry, how will that affect the values in the single tenant market? Uh, what I have seen is since rates have crept, crept up a little bit this past year is that it does have an impact on cap rates. Uh, so if, the, if those uh, interest rates are going to go up, the cap rates will, will follow, I believe. Karen, what do you see? And the, um, you know, we've the luxury of our low cap, uh, interest rates has just been so interesting to me. I was sitting in a meeting the other day and someone said, gosh, the rates are high, they're four and a half percent. And I just kind of <laughs> chuckled. I went, my dad would kill me if you heard me say that or, or listen to that. And I had to speak up. I said, that's still so low. You know, so I think we've all enjoyed these low cap rates and selling our, our dollar stores, auto parts, small centers where we're getting historical low cap rates. And I think the interest rates are going to keep uh, creep up as, as we know next year. But I don't see the cap rates really falling just rapidly behind them because of the, sh- the, the lack of uh, product there on the market. Yeah, I think that's a, a good point, and I think there could be less uh, product coming on the market in the years to come. If you'd like to get more information on interest rates um, and how that may affect real estate, look for the show that we did on the Fed's view on commercial real estate, which is on YouTube and the uh, show 
uh, channel as well or show website. Well, let's talk about the, the debt. What kind of debt can you get on a single tenant net lease property uh, right now, Sherry? Um, it really depends on the tenant, whether what their credit rating is uh, and your loan to value. But for instance, if you have an investment grade tenant, uh, a dollar store, something like that, uh, you can typically get up to 70, 75% loan to value. And the rates are going to vary depending on you know, a lot of things, but you can get a five, five year money at under 4%. Uh, seven year money is just over four percent or under under five percent so rates are really good right now and is that uh, locked in or is that going to adjust typically they're locked in for for instance five years or seven years okay. um, and Karen what do you see for debt exactly what Sherry's saying mm-hmm. uh, the amortization on that would probably be the term of the lease maybe five years outside of that so you have your balloon you know it's going to be based on that that fixed rate term and then there's the non-recourse money it's also available um, through life insurance companies and other avenues of, 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 of lending. And the rates are very similar, which in the tradition in the past, there would be some separation there between banks and um, non-recourse. But I'm really seeing those really neck and neck as far as the, the interest rates and exactly what Sherry was saying. Okay. So you can get a dollar store at a cap rate of what, around seven? Say seven. Seven. And you can get a loan at about 4%? Yes. And you can get up to 70% loan to value? Yes. So you have some incredible positive leverage there on the debt portion, right? Yes. It'll increase your cash on cash return substantially. Yeah. I think in some cases you can get close to double digit cash on cash returns depending on, on the spread between that interest rate on your loan and the cap rate on the property if you, if you pay off cash. So that's something interesting uh, to look at, especially with a safe property that you know, most people expect single tenant to be real safe. Close to the end of the show, Sherry, you got a closing tip for us, for our listeners. Um, I would say for anyone that's interested in getting into the single tenant net lease market, um, it's just to ask a lot of questions. Uh, know your market, know your tenant, um, you know, learn about it. Um, you know, it's, 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 a good, it's a good investment for you. Karen, quick tip. I always say devil's, uh, devil's in the details, so always look in the details and analyze it apples to apples, make sure you don't have an orange in there, and make a, you know, make a decision that you didn't know you were making, so just, just, just read. Karen, Sherry, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. For more information from anyone on the show today, you can find the contact information at commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, in past recessions, housing has been a catalyst to lead the country to improve job growth and recovery. Next week, we'll explore the rebirth of the housing market, and you're invited to join us. Well, thanks for joining us today. I'm Michael Bull. Until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by your friends at Bull Realty, France Media, Atlanta Office Liquidators, and Wiseman, Noack, Curry, and Wilco. For more information about these companies or to access additional show podcasts, videos, or blogs, visit commercialrealestateshow.com.